Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro and this is yet another Commodore floppy disk uh, drive video <laughs> it will be the last for a long time I promise you that So it's uh, in the middle of May here now and we are uh, making ourselves ready to celebrate our uh, national day, the 17th of May, which is a big day for all Norwegians when we all celebrate and have a, a day off. So I got these two drives recently uh, as a batch uh, of drives and a Commodore 64 uh, that I swapped with the one uh, <laughs> working 1541 drive. and. Uh, yeah, I thought that was a good deal. These are the two last remaining items that I'm gonna fix up. And uh, yeah, if I can make them work again and look pretty again, then I can obviously sell it off to somebody else. Uh, I got enough of these drives now. I think I have a total of 10 of 1541 and 5041 2s. And this is labeled dead. And this says, okay, needs cleaning. But it has, uh, yeah, <laughs> the top cover of the case is uh, loose and they are both uh, very filthy, especially this. And this uh, actually is a 1540, a VC 1540, which I have uh, not had. Uh, so I'm not sure if it is any different than the 1541. We'll see about that. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. If you are a creator and need some PCBs, then you should consider PCBWay. If you visit PCBWay.com, you can get an instant quote on uh, very good quality PCBs for uh, affordable uh, prices. Besides good quality PCBs, uh, PCBWay also uh, offers CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, 3D printing, injection molding, among other services. So head over to PCB Way and check out their services. So I'll start with this one and since it's uh, dead it means it's not working so uh, I obviously need to try and uh, repair it then and that will be the most interesting part of this video I guess. Figuring out what's wrong with it and see if we can actually make it work. And to test it we obviously need a Commodore machine and this is the one I repaired in the previous video. Uh, it had a lot of faults, you can check out that if you haven't seen it already. I hooked it up to the machine, I'm powering on and uh, yeah, I'm taking notice of the drive LED. You see it turns on and then it should initialize and then the red LED should uh, turn off but uh, it never does and I can hear that the drive is uh, spinning and doesn't stop and also if you turn on the machine it should initialize and uh, it doesn't do that either let's try and run uh, the command to load uh, the directory it just says searching and uh, nothing more happens and when a drive doesn't initialize, it can be some chip that is uh, broken. I have had drives before that I fixed and uh, it could be the CPU or uh, some of the ROMs or some of the logic chips that work with those. So we'll take a look now and check out what it is. And now we know that it's not working. No, even if the 1540 is uh, hooked up to a Commodore 64, it uh, isn't actually gonna work with a C64 uh, originally because it was uh, designed to be used with a WIC 20. However, I think uh, you can get at least the directory from the 1540 on a C64. But to use uh, all the features, you either need to upgrade the ROM of the 1540 or you need, of course, to use a 1541 on a C64. So that's one thing I'm gonna look into in this video is to see if we can make this work on a C64. 
Let me open it up and take a look inside, see what we can find. One screw missing. <laughs> Somebody has been in here before then. All right, we're in and uh, look at that. That's a little bit different than uh, the 1541, I think, the original 1541. But it has this large uh, power part here with these big capacitors. Very dusty, dirty inside. Before I do anything, I need to make sure that these capacitors are discharged. They can have a quite a high <laughs> current in them if you <laughs> touch them. Let's check to see if we get a spark or anything. Nope, nothing. So they probably have some resistors that are draining them pretty quickly. I took the drive out of the case and uh, yeah, there has been someone here uh, before. <laughs> what is this? Some plastic sticking out that's been put between the drive and uh, yeah, the plastic part here. Maybe to reduce uh, vibration, I don't know. And here it says uh, copyright 1981. I'm gonna take the drive uh, down to my garage and uh, blow away all the dust. I also take um, the covers to the bot. <laughs> Dust is gone and the case is cleaned and I'm just going to clean the PCB a little bit before I start. I think it's uh, much nicer to work on a, a clean board. No, these caps are really big and now they are really old <laughs> and I'm actually a little bit curious about uh, their values now if they have gone slightly bad and so I'm just going to test this one right in the circuit let's see so this is 10,000 microfarad yeah look at that 10.06 megafarad and the ESR is 0 ohms <laughs> so yeah still good and the other one. Yeah, 6282. That is a little bit lower, but uh, probably within spec. <laughs> so yeah, I will probably replace those if I can. <laughs> if I can get this uh, drive to work, that is. I connected the power to the drive and uh, turning it on and uh, yeah, it starts spinning and the drive LED does not uh, go off as it should. So that's the issue I'm going to focus on now first and I'm going to start by uh, doing some of the easy things first and that is taking out the chips that are socketed and uh, reseating them and then try to replace like the CPU the 6502 which is there and there's also two 6522 here and also here's a couple of uh, ROMs they might be gone too okay so before I do that it is actually a good idea to check for some voltages and uh, yeah we already know that uh, the 12 volts is probably working I guess that is what's driving um, the floppy drive motor but first I'm gonna check on the CPU and see if there's any 5 volt input on that and I think that is uh, pin uh, 8 that's pin 8 yeah 5.1 volts so we know there's voltage to the CPU at least. Checking some of the connectors. Yeah, there's 11.8 volts, so we have 12 volts. 
Then I'm gonna remove the socketed chips and uh, just use a little uh, deoxidizer or uh, electronic cleaner in the socket. These are very <laughs> stuck down there. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Did uh, that change anything? Nope. Well, that was expected. Couldn't be that easy. <laughs> the next easy thing to check is uh, if the CPU is uh, gone. And I actually got, uh, this is a SYU6502. It's another brand, but it is uh, compatible. So gonna try that one. Didn't quite fit, so I'm using my homemade tool here. The chip pin straightener, 3D printed. <laughs> okay, powering on. No, no change there. So then I'll just put back the original uh, chip and uh, yeah. This chip is labeled with the year 83, so this drive is probably from 83 or a little bit after. Most of the chips are also 83 and uh, this one is uh, 82. So I took out an uh, old 1541 drive and uh, I opened it and here we can see the differences. Um, quite similar, but uh, this is a shortboard version. And this is a, a long board, obviously, and um, yeah, they had the same two VIA chips, the CPU, the two ROM chips are almost the same. Um, the 1540 has a 9012-29-2 and the 1541 has a 1912 29-5. This is copyright 82, this is uh, copyright 83. The most noticeable uh, difference is that the 1541 drive has this 40 pin gate array chip and uh, that is a combination of uh, all the other chips on the 1540 put into one chip. Of course that uh, makes it a little bit harder to compare the two drives uh, when I try to diagnose what's uh, wrong with this one. So I went to simmers.net to try and find some technical information, some uh, schematics, uh, anything. And there is in fact a lot here. And uh, here you can find, uh, yeah, for example, a list of uh, known board revisions. There's a list of parts. Here we can see the different uh, chip numbers. And here's the service manual and uh, yeah, that contains a lot of useful information when you try to diagnose it. And here are some uh, flash codes. If uh, the 1541, when it pours up, uh, has an electronic problem, then it will flash the LED a number of times. That does not happen on uh, the drive I have here. It just stays on. There's some uh, circuit diagrams. And this is useful. This is a troubleshooting guide and here it has uh, different symptoms. Drive motor run continuously and the red LED stays on. Yeah, that's what we have. And there it says check plus 12 volt, check 6502, logic gates, logic array. So I swapped the two ROMs uh, from um, the working uh, Commodore and uh, that didn't have an impact uh, as expected, but I thought I'd just test the ROMs anyway. So here's the chip tester and uh, yeah, it's the chip tester pro that I recently built in a video. So it is a 2364, 24 pin chip. Let's see now. It comes up with the selection of Commodore. So I guess we'll say, okay. Calculating. Yeah, and there's the CRC32 value. 
let's run it again and see if it is uh, the same yeah so that chip works obviously hopefully <laughs> checking the other one yeah that checks out fine again yes 602 no it came out with a different uh, value this time yeah different value hmm okay so this uh, rom is a suspect uh, but for another fault then maybe i'll uh, put it in i actually checked with the one from the working uh, drive and uh, that came out with the same crc value <laughs> constantly so I had the drive on now for a while just to check if any chips get hot and uh, in fact that the uh, ROM there is getting quite uh, hot almost uh, too warm to touch and this one is cold and all the rest are cold but uh, this one this is quite warm yeah a lot warmer all right, so since that uh, 74 LS14 uh, chip, which is a hex inverted chip, I'm gonna scope that. I have uh, connected uh, the probe and uh, started uh, the Pico scope. So let's take a look at that uh, chip. So here's the pinout of the chip and it has six uh, inverters. The input on pin one and the output on pin two. And uh, yeah, same for all those, so I'm gonna check that we get an inverted signal on all those. I'm not really sure if all are in use, but uh, I haven't seen any schematics yet for uh, this drive, so it's uh, hard to tell. So now I'm checking the first uh, inverter on pin one and two. Pin one is uh, low and pin two should then be high. Yes, it is. Three and four. That's a high input and then a low uh, output, which it is. Five, there's some signal in there on the input. And then we should see the same signal, but uh, inverted on the output. Yeah, seems to be correct. And then I'm checking the next, and that is pin nine and eight. Nine is input. It's low, 10, uh, 8 is high, that's correct. The next one, uh, pin 11 is low, pin 10, it's, oh, look at that, pin 10 there is uh, above 1 volt but below 2 volts, so that is not correct. The last one, it has a low input and a high output so that is correct all right maybe that's it <laughs> we're on to it already okay so all these three uh, inverters here worked that one worked that one worked but the one here did not work so i'm thinking about uh, taking that chip out now and uh, yeah replace it obviously then i have to take off uh, the pcb Yeah, the contacts. So let's check this chip. Is it even connected on those pins in question? It's this chip here and yeah, pin 10 and 11 are definitely connected. Okay, so I'm gonna desolder this chip quickly and uh, see if I can find another one. And here you can see that massive transformer that is the bulk of the weight of this drive. <laughs> Mark the correct chip so I don't do a mistake. So the board looks alright on the backside. Uh, looks like nothing has been done to this. Um, yeah, let's uh, do a little bit of desoldering. I 
it was a little bit stubborn so I'm um, using a little bit of hot uh, air here to uh, make it come loose. Yeah, it's out. <laughs> Hopefully no ripped pads. Yeah, looks all right. <laughs> On the back side, yeah, looks all right. No, except this pad has come loose, but it's not connected to anything. So I guess, uh, yeah, it's connected on the other side. I solder in a socket. Just checking that the pin that uh, the pad came loose is uh, connected. Yeah, it is. Let's check that chip that came out and see if it's bad on the chip tester. It was a 7414 inverter. Okay. Yeah, look at that. Chip failed. Well, we already knew that, didn't we? <laughs> All right, I found a new one and uh, I have tested it in the chip tester. It tested okay, so hopefully this is good. All right, what do we get now? Let's see. Nope, it is still uh, not initializing. But if the ROM is bad, then it obviously can present the same fault. So I am taking the ROM from the other drive. Let's check. Yeah. <laughs> yes, look at that. It initialized, turned off. <laughs> okay, so maybe it's fixed except for I need a uh, ROM for this, but uh, see if I can find that. So that was a good sign. I'm gonna connect it to the Commodore now and see if we can uh, get anything out of a floppy drive. Just need a floppy. The close mechanism on the lid is bad, so I need to, to yeah, clean that out and lubricate, I think. Exciting, can we load the directory? Can I type? Okay, it communicated but it says file not found error. And that's another uh, perhaps issue we need to take a look at. File not found error was listed in the, the list of uh, possible faults in that service manual. I'm gonna turn uh, the floppy to the other side. I'm not really sure about this floppy disk either. So let's see now. No, file not found error. Just to be sure I inserted a known good floppy disk. No, same. Okay, next issue then. <laughs> The service manual says if message file on phone is displayed, clean drive head, check zero stop adjustment, check alignment. Okay, so uh, might be just that. No, it might be an electronic problem, even if the service manual says to clean, uh, but I'm starting with that. So I'm um, cleaning the drive read and write head a little bit. It doesn't look dirty. And I'm inserting a blank disk and uh, I'm going to see if I can format it. Because if it is out of alignment, you should uh, still be able to format it. So I'm going to use the 1541 diagnostics cartridge and uh, yeah, check if uh, I can format it. I'm first going to run an alignment check. See if that works. So it starts and uh, doing its thing, but um, yeah, it can't read the tracks on this disk at least. 0% aligned. Then I'm gonna try and format it. Uh, 
Okay, it is banging, but uh, not much happened. So let's see if we can read the directory. Okay, look at that. It actually read back uh, the name. I gave it test, but there's some uh, garbled <laughs> stuff after that. So yeah, I think the electronics are all right. It can write and uh, read from the floppy disk, but uh, it is probably very misaligned. Just trying this uh, head exercise. Let's see now if the head moves or not. I tried to move it to track 35. So it seems to be a little bit stuck. <laughs> oh no, the head could move because I have uh, moved the, the board out of the way and there was a stretched cable going to the head. So let's see now if we go to track 35. I need to be careful here not to short out <laughs> anything on the board. Yeah, now it moves. Can you see it? It moves all the way. Yeah, so the movement is okay, seems like. So now I'm doing a proper formatting and let's see if uh, the alignment uh, gets better than... Well, the alignment doesn't get better, but with a floppy disk formatted in this drive, then uh, the alignment check should be uh, okay. So the formatting went okay, mechanical test okay, writing. So it seems to do its job, but it takes a while and uh, yeah, maybe it has to do a lot more uh, retries when reading. Yeah, that was passed. <laughs> Let's run the alignment check now. Yeah, as expected, uh, it now uh, reads uh, 100% uh, because uh, this floppy was formatted in this uh, drive but that means that everything works except the alignment is a bit off so now i'm gonna try and adjust that and see if we can get it to read an original disc no this should uh, be read from basic yeah it did nice let's try first with that other disc it couldn't read maybe it was just a little cleaning i did that did the trick So oh, it's struggling, but it is loading. <laughs> yeah, so it is struggling with that still, but uh, a little better now than before at least. So now I'm checking an original uh, games disc and uh, look at that, it's uh, way off. <laughs> Let me try and adjust it and uh, yeah, the zero track stopper is this one. When you push it all back to track zero, it stops there. So I would suggest that uh, over time, when this pushes on the, the stopper, it will move in that direction. So I'm gonna move it a little bit the other way. See if that improves it. See if we can nudge it a bit there. Yeah, that made a little bit of improvement. Uh, now it's just off by one track here. So I'm gonna keep adjusting that and see if it improves. Okay, I made an improvement, but it's not enough. And there is an alignment screw on the side there. Just gonna try that. But it is <laughs> very hard to reach. I don't know if I can reach it. Maybe I have to take the drive out. All right, so uh, I have adjusted the, the screw a little bit now and uh, fastened it. And uh, at the same time now, since I took out the whole drive mechanism, I took out the LED and uh, yeah, gonna remove the front and uh, this part here, clean them up and lubricate afterwards. So that it slides a little bit better. Then a little bit of cleaning before I continue and test. Everything is quite dirty as you can see. I was gonna do the cleaning anyway, but now since I had to take it out to adjust uh, that alignment, I'm uh, doing it now. The underside looks alright. 
that's the stepper motor and it's a belt driven uh, motor for uh, the drive spindle it's an Alps made in Japan there's a couple of uh, capacitors there they might need replacement uh, at some point but uh, now they obviously is working now we can see in detail the mechanism that is in work when you insert a disc it goes in and it hits this uh, spring-loaded uh, metal mechanism that goes forward and uh, then it will stop there and then you push down and lock it and then when you release it it will pop out <laughs> so that works now but it was a little bit uh, stuck I think when I tested it before I'm gonna add a little bit of a lubrication to uh, the dry rails also a few of the parts that uh, are moving I'm trying to connect this drive without uh, <laughs> putting it back into the case the cables aren't long enough then without the locking mechanism I need to press it down with something I'll use my soldering <laughs> tin <laughs> okay let's see now if the alignment changed yeah will you look at that <laughs> that is perfect yeah look at that 100% uh, <laughs> on track on uh, everyone except track 15 and 99 those red half tracks or between tracks I'm not really sure if that is significant all right the ultimate test can I load the gauntlet original from a floppy star look at that <laughs> what an arrangement <laughs> I need to take a photo of that all right look at that not fully loaded <laughs> yeah works how can I start this without the joystick let me remove that arrangement before anything falls down and damage the drive <laughs> Alrighty, we got ourselves a working 1540 drive and now I'm just gonna put it back together and uh, I'm gonna add a little uh, lubrication here so that this slides uh, better. Then we have this spring arrangement. yeah that's good I cleaned the front looking very nice now so I think this is working just fine now I lubricated a little bit uh, on the pins that goes out and grips there there's still something wrong with that mechanism here because yeah you can see it stops there and you have to push really hard and then it that's not good maybe if I bend it a little bit yeah yeah I bent it upwards a little bit and now it works uh, much better well, look at that right in close open right in close open Okay, I think that's it for uh, this drive and I'm gonna assemble the whole thing and then we'll see about how to make a new ROM for it. Oh, I just noticed a couple of uh, rust stains so I'm scraping that off and uh, yeah, removing the rust and then I use a little bit WD-40 on this, uh, the spot there or maybe paint it. Yeah, just a little WD-40 should uh, protect at least a little bit there were actually two screws missing those two not sure where they went uh, gonna see if I can find 
some screw that fits. Yeah, I found a couple that fits. They are a little bit long, but that's not the problem. There's lots of space inside. I've tested the drive a little bit more now and it works perfectly fine. So now I'm gonna make a ROM for the one that was uh, not working. And uh, I'm gonna do it by using this uh, uh, ROM adapter because uh, you can't simply use an EEPROM directly. It has two more pins, that's one thing. And it's not pin compatible, so uh, yeah, this little adapter, which I got from uh, PCBWay, by the way, is uh, gonna be used for that. And then I just take a copy of this working ROM and write onto this EEPROM. I could of course uh, go online and see if I can find a copy of uh, the ROM, but uh, since I have this and uh, I think this is a newer version than uh, what was in the bad chip, I am gonna copy it. And to do that I'm using the Retro Chip Tester Pro, it has that feature. I have inserted a SD card memory uh, module here and also I put the uh, database for all chips onto this uh, SD card so that uh, the chip tester can detect the actual uh, chip. So I'm gonna find it now. It was a 2364 and now it's using the index file and it found that it was a Commodore 1541 disk. Okay so in order to dump uh, the content of the ROM, instead of just clicking OK, you just hold down the button and it starts saving it. Yeah, that created a file, a bin file, which should be a copy of uh, the content of uh, this ROM now. So now I take my EEPROM, it's an ST27C128 and I insert it into my programmer which is a XG Pro and it's a clone of uh, the more famous uh, Mini Pro. So now I'm gonna detect that chip and uh, try to write to it. And here's uh, the chip M27C512. No, that's not the right one. I searched for M27C128. So that particular chip and that brand is not uh, supported it seems like but we can select another one. So I copied the, the file that I dumped from the SD card and uh, here it is, it's an 8K file. But since uh, this uh, EEPROM is a 16K EEPROM, I'm gonna double it so that I burn the same binary twice and fill up the whole uh, chip. And to do that, I simply use the copy command in DOS and use the B option that indicates a binary file and then I uh, just select the two files with a plus. Uh, <laughs> I select the same file twice. You could also of course concatenate different files if you want and then call it uh, output.bin. So now I have one 16k output bin file. Okay, I read the chip and uh, it's all FFFF, so this is blank. And now I uh, selected this as uh, Intel 27C128. Okay, <laughs> that succeeded. However, I forgot to load the actual binary. <laughs> Trying another chip and this should be unused, hopefully. Program. Yeah, that succeeded and verified. Okay, nice. So now if I read back the content of the chip, we should find that data we saw. Yeah, here's that uh, error message information. Nice, now we have a copy of uh, that uh, ROM. All right, so this is the finished uh, adapter and I actually did make it now. I had one made from before, I didn't remember, but I suddenly remembered I had one. And uh, now it's just a matter of uh, placing uh, the EEPROM inside the socket. Yeah, that fits right in. 
no issues there. So now I just fit the, the whole thing into the socket of the PCB. It's a little bit uh, tight fit. There's a capacitor uh, nearby, but I think it fits just fine. All right, uh, let's see now, does it load from uh, the drive with, with this uh, EEPROM and uh, the adapter I made? Let's uh, load uh, the directory. Yeah, seems like it's loading. Yeah, look at that. That loaded just fine. Nice. Okay, look at that. One fixed uh, VC1540 floppy disk drive. And uh, yeah, after cleaning, it looks quite all right. Couple of scratches here and there that you can't do anything with, but I think this looks uh, yeah rather good now. No, for this 1541-2 drive uh, that is actually working, however a little poorly and is uh, quite dirty. I'm gonna clean it up a bit and it's missing a couple of screws. I need to find some screws and uh, yeah, I'll come back after having cleaned this up and uh, then I'll do a little testing and uh, then I think we're finished. I cleaned up everything, the case and uh, yeah, the drive and all the contacts and also the PCB underneath. Now everything looks like new. I have cleaned the, the head and uh, lubricated the, the rails. Also lubricated a little bit this uh, locking mechanism. So this drive is good to go. There were one missing screw and I found a replacement, so um, this is good then. I think it was just poorly assembled, uh, the case wasn't held really good uh, together. Yeah, look at that, now it's compact, everything is cleaned, it looks okay. Has a little bit of a brown color here on the fastenings, some yellowing perhaps, a couple of... Uh, uh, scratches that's all let's run a little test okay file not found error so I did actually load something from this before but now it seems uh, very misaligned too <laughs> I've inserted the blank disk and running the performance test let's uh, see what happens Yeah, so with the blank disk it is uh, alright, but uh, of course uh, <laughs> it was formatted in this drive, so that doesn't count. I'm sure now the alignment is maybe okay. No, it's not. So it seems to be reading uh, two tracks ahead. Okay, I'm gonna open up and uh, see if I can adjust anything. Okay, so on this drive it seems to be a little bit easier to adjust. You have this screw here, that is the track zero stop. And if it is three tracks ahead, then I guess the screw must uh, move a little bit back that way. And that screw you can uh, turn by using the finger. I have turned the screw a little bit back and forth and uh, yeah. Let's check now. Yes, look at that. Now it's good. I'm now using that original game disc, the Gauntlet game, and yeah, looking very nice now. Let me check that uh, disc that it couldn't read. Okay, now it loads. <laughs> 
nice. Just to check that if it can load a file. And there we have Simon Spacek. <laughs> so the alignment is good and to prevent that screw from uh, moving again, I'm adding a little drop of glue. I saw that there was some from before. Found this old floppy with something on. I'm not sure what. Let's see if it can read it. Yeah, there's some games. <laughs> on one side it's Boulder Dash, Exploding Fist 180 and on the other side is uh, some indie. Let's try and load. Uh... All right, it's Indiana Jones. <laughs> yeah, I have played this before, I think. Oops. All right, that's enough with the uh, Commodore floppy disk drives uh, for a while, I think. And no more floppy drive repairs, <laughs> I promise you. Anyway, it's very nice to have uh, two working floppy disk drives. Uh, now and uh, there wasn't much effort at all. Uh, well, <laughs> I burned a couple of hours, maybe five, six, seven, <laughs> I'm not counting, but uh, yeah, now they're looking good and can of course be sold to get something else. <laughs> and those two floppy drives were from my swap, where I swapped uh, <laughs> one working floppy drive with two non-working and a Commodore 64. So I guess that was a good deal then. All right, uh, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, hope to see you later. And a special thanks uh, to my Patreons. Uh, see you, bye bye.